So today we're going to be using uh, my Andalusia. This is uh, this is the single, yeah, this is the single malt whiskey Ooh. from uh, Blanco, Texas. Ooh, it's local. Local. I toured it uh, Saturday. Oh really? Yeah, cool did you guys. Get, you didn't get that Saturday, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh no, my. It, was, it was kind of cool. We bought it and then we liked it, so we, we went to go see what they're about. So. And we're making, what is it? This is an old fashioned. All right. Yeah. You see that? It looks appropriate. Yeah, it's appropriate for this place. Did this right? I can smell it from here. <laughs> That's potent. That puts hair on your chest. There you go. <laughs> oh, Luxardo. Like a dollar fifty a piece. They are. They're crazy. All right, now you two can make a bunch of comments on how I did this all wrong. Yeah, well, you know. But cheers to you. Hmm. It's good. Very good. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to the Howard. <laughs> Can we have a tour? Absolutely. Let's okay. go. We are in the entry of the Howard. The entry doors are the Crown Building in New York on Fifth Avenue, across from Trump Tower. And uh, they're going through a major renovation. So the, the front doors came available. So I, I purchased those, we've installed those. In phase two, we will, we will mock this up so it'll look like the front door of the uh, Crown Building. The Crown Building was built in the early 1900s. It was designed by the same architects, uh, Weston and Weston and Wetmore. They designed Grand Central Station. Oh, correct. And then, and Crown Building is a historically significant uh, hotel, recently sold for the most price per square foot ever in real estate. So it's, <laughs> uh, it's kind of cool that for some reason they wanted to get rid of the front doors and I, I was able to snatch them up. And now they're sitting here in Austin, Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and they're heavy. They're heavy. They're, they're legit. Heavy. They're real brass doors, so everything you see here is, is a big, thick plate black brass. The hinges are, are embedded in the uh, concrete in the ground. Yeah, you had to cut big old holes in the ground. Big old holes to set those in, and we had to have the springs all redone. So they're good to go. Is there anything special about the tile? Nope. This is no. just modern tile. <laughs> just tile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you show the bathrooms? I think we have to. Okay. We have to show yeah. them. I mean, we yeah. might as well, right? Yeah. So the bathrooms are right off the uh, the main entry. We've got uh, my 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 logo for the Howard is just a, a gentleman in a uh, in a uh, top hat. So, kind of created this logo. We have uh, a bathroom for standing. We have one for sitting. So whatever yes. is your pleasure. Oh yes. Well, I suppose we should check them out. Ooh. <laughs> With the, I guess I can't get too close to that because the <laughs> YouTube will make me blur it. Yeah, so this is a this is a stamp collection. It belonged to one of my mom's uh, ex-husbands, and she somehow got this in the divorce. She was gonna throw it out, and I said no, and so so she gave it to me, and then I couldn't put it up anywhere in my house because my wife wouldn't allow that. So. So this place is the perfect place to display it. So it's over the urinal you, and it's a collection of uh, real stamps, uh, all of nude women. It's paintings of nude women and uh, from all around the, the world. I have a lot of them from Rome. Yeah, a lot, a lot of Italian, of course. Roma and... But it's interesting, like you'll see a lot of, a lot of like Middle Eastern countries. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought this wasn't allowed there. Yeah, so. Okay, there well. you go. Ooh, guys. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> And then the sitting room. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I got a little more room in the sitting room. Yeah. Uh, uh, we got a chandelier. chandelier. Uh, this cadenza, we reclaimed that, uh, you know, probably like from the 50s, and put a modern sink into it. And uh, this wallpaper, uh, uh, my interior decorator showed me that, and I'm like, yep, that's it. That's the one I need. <laughs> Didn't have to see any other selection. It's like Corella DeVille <laughs> holding a cigarette. Is. Yeah. Have that kind of vibe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go inside the lounge and see what's okay. going on. The lounge. Whoa. <laughs> Hi, Tyler. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, this is where it gets crazy. Yeah, so had a little fun in here. It's nice. I have a... I'm a architect with my background and so having a 
not an unlimited budget, but a budget that wasn't constrained by a return on investment or <laughs> some, some goal uh, uh, for a business. So it's very freeing to just like, okay, I need a ceiling. We'll just do whatever wacky thing that can, you know, comes to mind and I don't have to justify it to a client. Uh, since I'm the client. So, uh, so why don't we start with the ceiling. The ceiling yeah. is a uh, fresco um, from the Palace of Versailles. It um, is the scene, it's called the... Uh, Ascension of Hercules. Uh, very good, Daniel. I remember. Yeah, it's the Ascension of Hercules. It's the story of Hercules who is born half mortal, half god. He's coming up into the heavens and being welcomed by all the gods. Uh, Where is Hercules? He's... Hercules is in his chariot right there. Uh, oh, there's Hercules. Yeah, with the club. Yeah, there he is. And then the gentleman with the robe is uh, Zeus. Oh, wait, where, where is he? Right here. He's like... Oh, there he is. He's That's real close him. to Hercules. There's yeah. Zeus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the, uh, the painter that painted the actual fresco um, took him four years. He went insane during the process and oh. committed suicide as soon what? as the project was done. Yeah. As soon as it was done? Yeah. He well, at least he finished yeah, it. It made him go nuts. We put this uh, picture frame of this decorative gold uh, picture frame all around it. Um, this, I took this idea from the Frick Museum in uh, New York where they, they framed all their skylights in an actual look, picture frame. And so I thought that was kind of cool. So we emulated that. The light fixture is uh, Murano glass. Um, it came from Milan, Italy, uh, is where it was assembled. So those, those curved panels are actually glass with gold and black embedded in the glass. Oh, you're kidding. I did not know yeah. that. Yeah. I always thought they were like a, a screen. Right, yeah, it looks like metal screen, but it's yeah. actually glass. Oh, I'll be damned. Well, I learned something new today. <laughs> oh, are there any, anything special with the wall sconces? Nope, they're just uh, some cool modern sconces. So I've, I've had to mix some modern elements. I didn't want this to all look like old, uh, like this was an old room. I did want it to be a, an eclectic room. So, so you'll see a lot of modern when I, like for the furniture and stuff, I brought in modern elements to kind of balance the, the, the old period pieces. Uh, and speaking of old period pieces, mm. uh, next up is the, um, pool table. This is a Brunswick and Balk Monarch. And uh, the Monarch was the top of the line that was offered in the 1890s. And this pool table is, has its original slates from Pennsylvania. They're two inch thick and in perfect condition. Uh, the wood is rosewood primarily with uh, exotic ro uh, woods inlaid. The targets are uh, real ivory, because <laughs> back in the day that's what you used, and then uh, we had it refurbished, so the, the wood was refinished, new felt of course, yeah. and uh, new, new leather pockets were sewn in. Wow. So this was uh, Brunswick and Balk, um, uh, used to be Br Brunswick, Balk, and Colander, um, and Brunswick bought all those partners out to become the Brunswick that we know today that uh, does all the bowling alleys and still makes a lot of pool tables. So one of the ideas uh, when, I, when I started making this space, I probably should tell you why I made this space, um, <laughs> yeah. had a car collection that was starting to build and running out of space so I was renting space here and there to, to store cars and it kind of occurred to me since I dabble in real estate, why not buy a spot uh, that I can store my own cars? And so I bought this warehouse. This is, we're, we're in a warehouse, and I bought this warehouse with the idea I was just gonna store cars. And then, you know, I like working on the cars with my buddies and stuff, so might as well add a lift. And then it kind of just snowballed. Well, if you have a lift, you probably have a refrigerator with some beer, and well, maybe it's a bar, and then maybe it's a, <laughs> maybe we got a TV so you can watch the game, and then it just, it just turns into something else. You know, COVID happened while I was designing this, and it made you really evaluate, well, what do I do with my free time? What kind of space would I want to create with this with my, it, so I can spend my free time in that space with my friends? And so that's what this room is, is this is so, so my friends can store their, their liquor, and uh, let me show you what these lockers. So you have a couple shelves for your liquor, you've got the space for your pool cue, uh, your little humidor, in an accessory drawer. And the idea is uh, you don't have to keep bringing stuff when you come here, your stuff is here. For the centerpiece, 
for this room, um, I was able to get this uh, bronze. It's called the Spirit of Ecstasy. You probably recognize it. It's these. It's made by the same artist that uh, designed the original Spirit of Ecstasy, um, uh, Sykes, Charles Sykes. So Sykes designed the uh, Spirit of Ecstasy for an individual who, back in the day, you you hired an artist to design your car's uh, hood ornament. And so when Rolls-Royce saw what he had done, they uh, bought the rights to it. And then they also com uh, commissioned about, I think it was like 25 of these dealer models in bronze. And this is one of the original dealer models that was in all the showroom floors back in the 1900s, and early 1900s. And uh, um, so one came up for auction, I was able to snag it. And so that's one of the things I, I don't want this to man cave to become uh, the typical man cave where you, you see Texaco signs and, and you know stuff that's just literally car. So something that's more subtle, a uh, little subtle nod to a car is is kind of the thought here. Yeah, that's pretty badass. <laughs> that's cool history too. Yeah. Oh, that's a show. My locker. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I have one. That's me. <laughs> and we put uh, Italian uh, cut marble floors. Oh. Wow. I mean, Any marble here is is definitely from Italy. It's it got to be. Everything I can get from Italy is here. It's got to be. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Little sitting area there. Right now, I just ha temporarily have these these kind of placeholder pictures. The idea is we start taking pictures of our of us doing stupid things. We'll we'll start replacing <laughs> these with actual pictures of ourselves. Are we gonna make them black and white so they look timey? I like the black and white with the yeah with the black and gold frames. I think it's kind it's of like cool. that. That kind of looks cool. I mean, that's yeah. That's from our tour of Colorado. Yeah. So this is uh, one of the three uh, uh, frame TVs that I have. So they're actual TVs. So we can put the games up here during uh, on Saturdays. But other times, it, it looks like a picture when it's yeah. at rest. It's pretty cool. Phase two is through this door. There's a cool courtyard. I won't show you because uh, you'll see that next year probably. And yeah. We'll have a, we'll have that all a nice sitting can't, area. Can't unveil it all in one. <laughs> yeah. The bar. The you bar. The bar. So the bar was a challenge. Um, I found this cool company in Pennsylvania. They they go around the country and and every time a old bar goes defunct, and they've got like a nice uh, American Walnut bar, they buy it and store it, and then you go there and you ask them to refurbish it. So I called the guy and said, "Here's what I need. I need a 20 foot bar." And and uh, he goes, "Is this for a man cave?" And I go, "Yep." And he goes. Yeah, you and everybody else wants a 20-foot <laughs> bar, but they don't really exist. Most bars are 30, 40, 60 feet. Yeah. So he, he said, well, I, I don't have that, but what I do have is some cool furniture uh, that's made at the same uh, time period, and uh, you can modify that. And so that's what we did. We bought a credenza from this guy, and, uh, and then we had uh, a Woodwright in Pennsylvania as well. Um, uh, cut this thing in half, uh, long ways and sideways, and then split it up. And the top two pieces became the back bar and the bottom two pieces became the front bar. This piece was uh, originally designed to store china for some really rich person. <laughs> um, it's 10 foot tall, it's Italian. Uh, the carving uh, is, is all in Italian walnut and the carvings are just, uh, they're amazing. The amount yeah. of detail that, that they put detail. into this. And everywhere you look, you'll find new things that you hadn't seen before. Um, I don't know if there's some kind of theme or you know what, what drove all these characters to be together in one piece of furniture. Right. You know, there's, there's cherubs and lions and dolphins and <laughs> half-naked women and some guy that looks like Jesus. Yeah, I, he kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's pretty cool. And so, like for example, here's the, the door the storage behind it. Yeah. Yeah. So everywhere you see the decorative wood is the the old piece, and this is probably somewhere in the 1880s is what we're guessing. And then where you see less detail, like in this middle section, that is new American walnut. And then one of the cool things, uh, the woodwright kind of surprised me is he built out this little little uh, pediment here for, for something, and what he did was he took one of the cherubs off the corner, he took, popped that off, and cast that in, in resin, and then stained it to look like it's it, it, the rest of it. So that's actually fake, 
and the two on the end are hand carved walnut. That's so cool. Yeah. The bar equipment uh, is all professional equipment, so the idea is we could hire uh, a bartender for, for, for events. They would be very comfortable here uh, working, working the bar. We got our beer cabinets. We have a, uh, a really nice uh, two group head espresso machine. Uh, it's a Mirage Veloci. It's um, made by Keith van der Weisten, and it looks like an engine. It, it, the, the, yeah. the metal work on it is, is really, super really cool. cool. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a big espresso drinker, so I'm, I'm drinking three or four cups a day here. And uh, so we burn through a lot of, a lot of espresso. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this was kind of, uh, you know, why did I call it the Howard? Well, it's named after ha Percival Howard. Percival. Uh, if you're from Austin, you've heard of Percival. Percival is, uh, we call him the original uh, playboy um, of Austin. And uh, Percival's seen here, he's in his uh, leopard driving coat, with a, complete with leopard gloves and leopard hat. So he was a baller of his time. You can picture him in some like open jalopy going across country on dirt roads. Uh, Rolls Royce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he probably had one of those <laughs> Rolls Royce. Rolls -Royce yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he, he's off-roading in his Rolls Royce <laughs> open canopy. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> it's very Texas. I play drums in a band and so that was another goal for this space is uh, that we play here. Um, we, we practice uh, once a week. And so this is our practice space, and uh, and we're going to start doing uh, little tiny concerts here, having some starting with some local artists. Uh, oh, cool. We come in here and we have a kind of an intimate uh, night with that artist. We have this glass wall that looks into uh, the room where you know Dan shoots a lot of his videos. And yes, we know it's very dark in there, and that's on purpose. And you can see right now, I have the lighting control to, to where the cars have become art, and, and they're, they're, you know, the back is dimly lit. Uh, you know, my truck can be parked in the back, you won't even see it, because it's yeah. black, it just blends in. It turns it into a picture, basically, when you stand back. Right. All you that bitch about the uh, lighting, this is why we have it that <laughs> yeah. way. So it's not, it's a, uh, it's not harsh lighting in here. It's it's uh, very beautiful to look at these cars because they are they are art when they're at uh, when they're not moving. The lights are controlled, but yeah, you can see you can set it to different lighting modes. Yeah, the uh, the gentleman uh, uh, that designed the lighting system, he. Um, he design. He has a company. He lives across the street from me, and he has a company. He does all the lighting for Apple stores and Louis Vuitton. So he, he, his clients need their product lit perfectly. And when I told him about what I was doing here, he said, "Oh, I've got to light your your space." And I said, "Oh, fantastic!" And he's given it to me at cost, which is ten times more expensive than if I would just done some regular LED lights. <laughs> and it's twenty times more complicated. So every time I need you know, something fixed, I've got to have an IT guy come out essentially that is versed in this lighting system to make adjustments. So it's been a double-edged sword, but it, the results are, are amazing. I, I'm, I was so pleased when I, that was one of the things that really exceeded my expectations with this, with this uh, space was the lighting system. Sucks for filming, but amazing yes. for, <laughs> amazing to look at. Filming. It looks terrible for filming. <laughs> filming was not on my list no. when, I, when I gave him uh, my requirements. And that's what people got to understand. It was not the goal to have it be like, hey, let's make it bright as shit so you can film. Right, right, <laughs> yeah. I mean, because he, he could make it bright as the sun in here. But, yeah. uh, you know, and I, I painted all the walls black. That's on purpose. I, I want. I want the building to, the, this warehouse, you don't realize you're in a warehouse because everything that's warehouse is painted black and it just goes away visually. So uh, yeah, that's the Howard. Um, and you know, like I said, there's more to come. This is a work in progress. We just keep adding and, and uh, modifying as, as needed, so. Thanks Richard. Yeah, <laughs> cheers everybody. Mankind won't be the